everybody, Josh RV Nerd from Bishes RV here in Coldwater, Michigan with another Cougar today. And if Katy Perry makes music for tweens, Cougar makes tweeners, basically. This is an RV that kind of fits in between the more traditionally outlined things out there. So like, there's Big Cougar, Little Cougar. There's the Little Cougar 29 RLI that gives us opposing living slides, but like a small compact upper deck. Then there's the 316 Big Cat Cougar that gives us opposing slides, and then a big upper deck with a full east-west bed slide. And then there's this one that kind of slides right in between the two. But what's awesome about this is it still gives us stackable washer-dryer prep, but it does it actually downstairs in the big pantry space in the kitchen so this thing has either more kitchen storage space than you're gonna know what to do with unless you're my mother boy she can pack a she can pack an RV heavy she is one that will challenge the GVW of an RV for sure um, or uh, you can go combo or stackable washer dryer whatever works for you and still maintain a true queen bedroom upstairs that is very very friendly uh, if you're claustrophobic with nice wide open side stands now we've got uh, still dual power awnings automatic leveling 0 to 110 degree rated because that's the thing cougars are actually some of the best hot climate campers you're going to find out there people don't talk about that enough uh, especially when you factor in the second factory air that's been optioned out of this one there's also factory solar um, there's uh, the rear towing hitch that's on this one in case you want to put like a generator cargo tray or something on the back or a small little enclosed trailer that you can haul with you or anything like that uh, it does have a couple hiccups like the fact that it just doesn't have an east-west bed but they make other models for that for what they were looking to accomplish here I think this thing is really really well done and as we go I'd love to hear your feedback on that it does have a couple hiccups and hang-ups so I'm gonna make sure I point those out and a couple notes up in the bedroom that I want to share with you all right, so kind of like the Black Eyed Peas in their edited remix version, let's get it started in here. Now, the living room of this, you know, that we're looking at right now, it is essentially identical to the Cougar 316, which is a uh, one that has a double sink bathroom and an east-west bed slide with, you know, full front traditional closet. It is very similar if you're, if you know, you don't need quite that big. Maybe you want a little bit smaller and lighter weight or less money than this. Take a look at the Cougar 29 RLI. It will give you basically the same living room with the opposing slides. You see the blackout roller shades. I've got kind of half set up here. Um, you know, the uh, all your major features. It just has a little bit more squished down for an end. Now, as you can see over here, a couple years ago, Keystone went carpetless and there's slide outs. You can see the difference between the actual flooring and the little carpeting they use to help kind of hide some wiring runs. You do also still have a choice between a table and chairs and a booth dinette in one of these. That's one of the things Cougar gives you that very few brands do. They're also the brand that is uh, making the difference in the industry based on your input making the difference uh, in the industry by giving us not just a privacy shade in the door, but one that opens from the bottom up. Because what that lets you do is while you're walking around in here, you basically still maintain full privacy. But if somebody comes and knocking on your door, like Three's Company, well, the fact is you can peek over the top to see who's here um, and decide whether you want to answer the door or not. Although, remember, you've always got all these big campsite viewing and breeze windows. You can always look over that dinette through that side slide window that obviously faces forward, not back like we are currently, and you could eyeball that from there. It's just sort of what you want to do. Now, they go with full-size side stands, and this floor plan, you know, again, for the goals it's looking to accomplish. Like, I acknowledge that if you want a, uh, you know, east-west bed slide, this isn't the right one for you. But for the goals this floor plan is looking to accomplish, I have to go looking with a map and glasses to find nitpicky bicker points because this thing is exceptionally well done. About the only bicker points that I have down here is the, uh, the, the sofa side stands. They're nice and big, so you can actually set a dinner plate on them. That's great. But the power outlets, both household and USB, are like all the way down by the floor, which doesn't leave you a lot of cord room. You may have noticed up here, too, there is one of those big XL ceiling vent fan systems with uh, rain sensor action and kung fu grip going on. And I tell you what, if you stare at those things long enough at just the right angle, your brain starts to lose, like, what is the orientation of that? Uh... At least mine does. I don't know. Anyway, now looking back here, the uh, breeze windows again on both sides of the seating, but look at the light switch on the left-hand side of the sofa. That is for all the main living room ceiling lights. Now, over by the dining table, there's a switch for the lights in the slide. Um, 
And of course, right by the entry door, your in-command panel can operate all of the lights uh, right from there as well, all of your ceiling cabin lights anyway. So there are certain little zone lights like above the, uh, the uh, stove top or the uh, dinette that still have their own individual switches. But the fact is, you don't have to go you know, up and down to the digital smart panel every time you want to turn the lights on and off. Now, you may have noticed how I did not have to look all the way up to the ceiling to take a good look at that television right there. That's something that these, uh, that, that Cougar does just very, very well. You may also notice, too, that symmetrical kitchen situation that they have going on right there. Uh, that's something that they noticed Montana was doing really well with, and Cougar and Montana... They, uh, they share notes and they cheat off each other's tests quite a bit. And what works for one, they try to adopt in the other very frequently. What's nice about this, uh, you do have counter space on both sides of the stove. So if you're left or right-handed, doesn't really matter. You got the pop-up power towers on both sides. And they did give us a breeze window back there, which means half of that has a screen. And if there's grease splattering on the screen, it's going to be a little difficult to clean, obviously. You could always take the screen out. If you open it for airflow, you're going to let bugs in. Or, um, you know, you could just pull the, uh, the the window blinds down over that and not have to worry about it. Now, over here in a big cat cougar, in the kitchen, you're going to get solid surface countertops. And I love this big oversized, like, painter's palette style island. Although I, I'm, I'm eyeballing it, I think that's going to pose a problem when it comes to accessing the refrigerator. Not the fridge, but the freezer half of the fridge in transit. Although I will close this up and show you the RV in road mode later. Now that's a no knee knocker dinette. And I, you know what? I'm just trying to change things up. The chairs, this is how the chairs stack and strap down for transit, by the way. But I also shoved the other two chairs that I did uh, set up all the way under the table to showcase the fact it's a no knee knocker dinette. And whether you get the booth or the table and chairs, you get that awesome no knee knocker dinette, which has a big tall clod. I personally really appreciate. But this right here is really one of the main signature calling card points of this floor plan. We open all that up, we see that not only is that just a monster amount of storage, but it is also prepped and ready, whether you want a combo or stackable washer dryer, and you'll still maintain some storage above it, which is very, very cool, I think. Now, um, a lot of times washers and dryers, the hookups for those are up in the bedroom. This one's bedroom setup doesn't allow for that. So it's cool that they found an alternative. But if you talk to anyone who really, really knows their stuff about RVing, who has spent a long time RVing with a washer and dryer on the road, they will tell you that having that washer and dryer down here in the lower deck, just above the axles is hands down the best place for it because it's the least violent place in the RV and it puts the least amount of stress on that washer dryer unit going down the road. That's literally the reason that they're not supposed to be installed dead on the rear wall. Although some manufacturers do still do that. You may have noticed we had awesome space for a big time wastebasket space under the sink. Great kitchen drawer storage. Um, and I wanted to make sure I got you a good look at that because uh, there's tons of cabinet space here, but they have all the drawers in the island. So it can be uh, kind of easy to miss at times. Now you may have noticed a couple things too. Like over here, uh, the lights for the slide out that I mentioned, well, they're like me. Sometimes they're bright and sometimes they're dim. It just sort of depends on how caffeinated they are on a given day. Over here, we got our little coffee bar, and you may notice some of the outlets throughout the RV, inside and outside actually, have these yellow stickers. What that's telling us is that uh, it is prepped and ready for an inverter loop. Now, you could add an inverter to any of these Cougars to power up those outlets, including the bedside headboard outlets, which is really nice you see up there in the distance. You can also get the more advanced solar packages that already have some inversion uh, going on right from that level there. Now, on the way up, a couple things. Our in-command system panel, as well as the new tankless on-demand water heater controller right there. So that when uh, you know, you're know you taking back-to-back -back showers, or if the campsite cook is up in here cooking up a storm, well, nobody has to take the cold shower. Um, you know, I've always been a more basic level travel trailer RV or myself and when my wife and I go camping she's got lots of hair part shoot sorry I forgot I left <laughs> 
I left my coat and my hat because the sun came out over here on the toilet. And one of their little promotional posters I just left rolled up I hadn't put out quite yet. So pardon my mess. Never mind me. But take a look at me sitting on the toilet, if you will. The elbow room at first looks a little tight, but the good news is there's plenty there. Now, what I was saying uh, about camping with my wife. Sorry, I got <laughs> squirrel. Um, she's got more hair than me which isn't saying much, I understand, but the fact is she has more hair than me, and she takes far, far longer showers than I do, and that means that typically, you know, I end up taking a cold shower. Now, that's often for a number of reasons, neither here nor there, but you get the idea. Uh, <laughs> so having that tankless on-demand water heater, that is the thing I'm finally circling back to here. That's something I enjoy. And it's those fun little tangents right there that sometimes get me in trouble. I'm taking a look at all the, uh, you know, all the storage space here in the bathroom. I love what they're doing here under the sink with the drawers to the floors right there. And notice, too, there is a seat over here in this corner shower so Uncle Gary can, well, shave his shins. And I love the headroom up in this thing. Now, you may have noticed the air conditioning system looks a little different in these. They call it their Blade Pure Air System. Uh... The bedroom air conditioner, by the way, is optional. Obviously, we've applied it to this one. I can't imagine an RV this size and a full Big Cat Cougar not having that. But you know what? Maybe I don't understand how everybody camps, and I don't want to judge. But uh, that has a residential air filtration system on it. And if you go back and look at the, uh, the video where you can, start counting the number of vents up in the roof. They have tons of vents up in there, up in there. And they get all the air down in here, down in here. Uh, those little vortex, uh, you know, whirlpool-style uh vents that they have on there basically help suck the air out of the vents so that your cold air that you've taken time to air condition doesn't sit up in the ceiling where it's not doing you any good it gets down here where you want it and because there's more vents it does so with less turbulence aka less noise now that's a 60 by 80 true queen which is awesome it gives you nice big wide open side stands it's very symmetrical it's very cool they do not offer a king bed option on this floor plan um, if you want something like that, you might need to step up into the Big Brother 316 Cougar with the, uh, you know, full east-west bed slide. Now, I think, and I haven't confirmed, I think what I'm looking at here is actually a transitional item. I believe that closet right there is going to be uh, revamped in the near future. And I think what that will end up becoming is two taller hanging closets on the left with three drawers on the right. Um, they've been doing that in their smaller Cougar series. I suspect that that slide out will eventually find its way up here into this floor plan. Uh, the reason being, the if you have taller stuff that you're hanging, like I have long legs. If I tried to hang long pants in that, they would not hang all the way down. They could get a little bit wrinkly. Some people don't like that. Some people don't like the fact they have to open the doors to get to the drawers. So I do believe they will be solving that issue. And by the way... There is a privacy shade up in that front windshield. Uh, it's also surprisingly deep. I left it cracked a little bit. I don't talk about this very often, but if you look up in there, I think that'd make, I, I, you know what? If you ever, like, if you camp with a cat and you lose your cat, they're up there in the sunshine, just, just snoozing the day away, loving it. Now, when the bed is in the slide, nobody can really tell you if you can or can't use it and sleep on it when it's closed. I've only recently started talking about that. I wish I had talked about that sooner because I, I fear that I've provided some bad information in the past. But when the bed is not in the slide like that, then there's zero question about it. That is yet another feature on this RV that makes me feel it's like an absolutely fantastic floor plan for that um, extended stay but semi-nomadic kind of life. Like if you're not just staying put, you'd move sometimes. What so you might stay there for a while, this floor plan is maybe one of the best floor plans you're going to be able to find out there uh, for like a full-time RVer, uh, especially considering the fact that for travel stops, you can at least get to the fridge. The freezer, you could crack open and maybe reach in there and grab something, but not totally full access. But if you appreciate how we take the extra time to showcase all that extra detail for you, make sure you hit that subscribe button and uh, leave us a little note. Tell us that we're doing a good job for you.
And while this RV fits in between a lot of things, I do think when it comes to towing, your minimum three quarter ton uh, country here, if not, uh, you don't need to go dually on something like this, I don't feel. If you went single rear wheel one ton, I don't think you'd regret it, but minimum solid three quarter, like heavy duty is where I feel this one is. Um, largely, you know, equal amounts due to just the general dry weight of it, but also that hitch weight. That's, you hear me talk about that on fifth wheels all the time if you watch my videos regularly. Now, what's kind of cool about this one, I think that this is an awesome like snowbird, sunbird, um, migratory <laughs> fifth wheel. Because if you look at it, yeah, it's got some decent size to it, but it isn't one of those 42 foot USS Battleship Cougar behemoths. Uh, it's something that's, you know, if you are gonna zip it down the road, it's a really nice size where it actually tracks behind your vehicle very nicely. Now for towing confidence, uh, you've got the Goodyear tires, now standard for the 23 season. And with this being a full big cat cougar, or actually even the small cat cougar fifth wheels, have that road armor pin box and suspension one, two combo. Uh, these are also prepped for tire pressure monitoring. And you might notice they cross plumbed everything so that you have one stink pickle depository right here. All of your sewer stuff comes out of one outlet. You don't have multiple areas. Uh, the underbelly is enclosed, radiant barrier, uh, forced air heated in several ways, uh, as well as the fact that the, um, oh, what am I wanting to say there? Oh, you have t uh, holding tank heaters, and they're thermostatic, which is like Ron Paul Peel said it and forget it. And basically, if it's, uh, you know, warm, the tank heaters won't kick on if you leave the switch on, so you're not going to sit there and melt a hole in the bottom of your holding tanks. Now, over here in the privatized docking center that all Cougar fifth wheels have, almost every fifth wheel has that nowadays. I just want to get you up in here so you can see there is a hot cold utility shower and that plug right there if you want to get a, uh, a portable solar panel kit. Now those portable jobs, they have their own charge controller so they can work with uh, the factory solar packages that we're looking at here as part of the Keystone Solar Flex system. So we're looking at the absolute base solar version of this today. It's a 200 watt solar package and that's a 15 amp controller. What is nice though is even at the the base package they're still using good hardware like a victron mppt charge controller and I, I can't even spell mppt but i know that maximum powerpoint technology will net you a little bit more juice than uh pwm methodology that a lot of factories will use on a base system here now no matter what you're going to get the giggy box here that we're looking at on this cougar and uh what that is basically it's like a battery disconnect on steroids and uh, the, the cool thing about that is it 100% blocks any and all parasitic load off those batteries. But of course, the solar package bypasses that disconnect and goes straight to the batteries to keep them charged up. Now, if you have pulled the batteries off the RV, what you don't want to do is just let the uh, solar package sit there and just churn all winter or whatever. It'll, it's a good way to wear out the charge controller, especially if you accidentally leave some lights on in the RV. So Keystone is like one of the first manufacturers I've seen that is actually adding a battery disconnect dedicated strictly for the solar package, which I think is uh, also pretty darn cool. Now, uh, they are, this is kind of a, uh, a, a before version. You're going to see something change on this later this year. Like you notice it right here, that is carpetless, like uh, toy hauler, heavy duty flooring, but that's that like felty stuff. That's gonna go away and they're gonna put some of those ABS bucket things on the side. So kind of keep that in mind. That's transitional that we're looking at today, just on video. That is also our uh, in-command system over here, another one of those handy inverter outlets. And then as we work our way over here onto the campsite of the RV, once again, one of the best qualities of this one is that they put tons of windows over here on the campsite instead of the poop side. That is nerdism number 37, by the way, submitted by one of our amazing, awesome viewers. I love you guys, by the way. The fact that you tolerate me and you put up with me, just I'm just, I'm just some dad bod Midwestern dude walking around campers yakety yakking all day long here. And I really appreciate the fact that you just keep tuning in, you keep answering my silly questions, you keep putting up with my, well, my bad jokes. But if you want to turn a bad joke into the dad joke, you turn the B around. Like Cindy Lou Robinson. Anyway, um, <laughs> I'm, I'm moving on. Back to the Cougar. Um, on the back here, you do have a 3,000 pound towing hitch with safety chain hooks and four way wiring harness. You may notice they also have a stinky, slinky sewer hose tube. Now, you might notice there is a blade valve exposed over here. That's the freshwater um, you know, emptying tank. Interesting thing Keystone does on a lot of their RVs. 
they actually put the fresh water tanks all the way in the back of the RV uh, with the idea being, uh, you know, you could potentially load balance this thing a little bit. That being said, I don't recommend towing any more water in the tanks than you absolutely have to. Well, like I said, this one's a tweener. Check the links in the video description. I'll show you something that's a little bit smaller, something that's a little bit bigger, and then I'm gonna try to find something that's pretty darn comparable out there. And I'd love you to take a look and let me know which one you would go with and why. Let me know what you think of their updates and let me know what you think they should continue to focus on and where they should continue to evolve and change. And I'll make sure that feedback gets back to the factory. So until next time, take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone. Thank <music> you.